Hi there, Ed Liva with Dave Wilson Nursery. And we're fortunate enough today to be able to interview Rosalind Creasy and visit her edible landscape and share in all the wonderful ideas that this woman brings to us in designing your own edible landscape. Hi there, Ed. Hi, Ros. Come How on in. Do I'm do? doing great. I'm doing great. Well, we've come to visit your garden today, and uh, love to have you tell us uh, some of the things that you do to okay. get this beautiful looking landscape. Which people drive by and don't know are edible, right? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay, come what, on in. What, is, what's ins what inspires you to do this? Why, why edible? Why do you? Why? Why, I, why, I why should we do this? I wouldn't call it inspiration. I would call it driven. Absolutely. I am driven. Well, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I am driven. I want to change people's concept of what beautiful plants look like. Yes. And why why can't you mix these? I mean, it's ridiculous. Look at this beautiful um, scarlet runner bean, like covered with beans. Yes. All right? And it's an entryway, and it has flowers, and it's beautiful, and it tastes good. Yes. And why not? So. And considering the fact that we're we have the lead in with this beautiful border that you've created here. I mean, you've got cucumbers here and you have strawberries mixed so you in. You see the strawberries? Look at them. They're look. wonderful. I, I, yeah. Wait, you got to take a look at those. I mean, aren't those ugly? I mean, <laughs> they're in boxes, so the strawberries fall over and um, cascade, so the bugs don't get them much easier to take care of, much prettier. People can see the fruit and the neighborhood kids can help themselves. We have so it's great. Dahlia's right behind right, it. Right yep. Behind mm -hmm. be yep. We teach the kids it's not all edible and they have to ask before they, you know, sample. Sure. And then people say to me, oh, well, you can't have it in the front yard because don't people steal your things? You know, and I said, no, not. They don't steal zucchini. They don't. <laughs> they don't. They don't. Yeah. And they don't steal cucumbers or, or take lettuces. Or, you know, if I had peaches out here, I would probably be too much of a temptation. Yeah. Give me an idea. What how do you determine what should go together? I mean, what, 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 what do you use as a guide? Well, I'm a landscape designer. I've yes. been doing it for 25 years. So some of that is just plain experience. Mm -hmm. And you can take the same rules if you've been doing anything with flowers and vegetables. doesn't matter. You know, it really, it's just look at the plant, see what its form is, what's the color, where, can, where does it grow best, and where do you put it with? So, you know, I put it with things that, that do the same. Geraniums, they don't need a lot of water, so I can put them with this beautiful um, pineapple sage. See this one? It's called Golden Delicious, right after the apples, right? Ah, mm -hmm. It uh, has a smell and tastes like a pineapple. And the red perilla behind it, the deep red, that's used if you uh, ever have the uh, when you have sushi and they give you the ginger, they pickle the ginger in Asia. They pickle it with that red leaf shishu. It's a little flavor, yeah. but it also gives a little color. So that's what gives it a slight pink. But you know, if you walk along the front border, about half of it's edible. We have bronze fennel. Yes. And in the wintertime, that'll fill in a lot. We have the kumquats. And it's, they're just starting to bloom, but they'll give a lot of color in the wintertime because yes. the fruit's going to drop off. The strawberries, some of the leaves will turn red, so we'll have a little color there. But what I'm trying to do is give interest, color, different season. You know, just think through the season, just like you would a regular design. But I like the way you also mix the short plants, yeah. and then you have these taller plants in mm -hmm. the background too. So it, it adds depth. It gives, mm -hmm. it gives real depth. Layers. Yes, and layers. Exactly. Lots of layers. Exactly. Yep. And the other thing about the layers, though, too, is it functions. Because from the house now, you can't see in. This is privacy from the street. Right, exactly. It just happens to be covered by tomatoes, lots of Roma tomatoes there, early girls there, bush beans there, and more tomatoes over there. That's so fantastic. And people there don't is think the front of the house. And there's you have the front to really house. be square right here to that's get a right. good look at it. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's because fantastic. that's this is my Eden and you know it just encloses me. Yes. It gives me privacy. So very yeah. good. Yeah. Let's go you in. You wanna go in? Uh, All right. What do you want to see? There's yep. so much to see. You know, the first thing that I see, and yes. the first thing you notice when you come in the in, in the front and you get through yeah. the arbor. Of course, is it you have chickens? I have chickens. Yes, so I have chickens in the front yard. Isn't that amazing? I, know? I, think, it's, I think it's wonderful. But yes, you, you've incorporated it into the landscape so well. Yes. That, uh, 
Can we disguise give us, it? Give us your ideas. All right. My idea was that it's a lot more fun in the front yard, that they would have it sunnier, and it was, it's, it's shaded in the afternoon, so with a big tree, right. and I can't grow anything under there except chickens. <laughs> chickens do well. Right. So like. yeah, but they love the afternoon shade yeah. and uh, love the morning sun, which is what they get. And the neighborhood children, we have the drill. They know I have. Um, sorrel planted down front mm -hmm. and they pick the sorrel and they bring it and they put it through the coop so every time a child shows up the chickens just go crazy yeah. but the kids also know the rules yeah and I've been doing this for about 15 years and so the older kids now teach the younger children very good and so what they know is that they don't come over without telling their parents that they let me know they're here, that they don't step in the beds, that there are plant places and people places. Yeah. And as soon as a new child steps in the beds, I'm like, no, no, they're plant places and people places. And so, that, that's so, so well illustrated here. You, yeah. You, you've, you've actually created, this is a people place. This is a people place, yeah. Where you yeah. can actually walk in. Right. Yes. And they do learn they can walk on the lawn, so <laughs> that is the one exception. But, I, I admire uh, the fact that you have a small This lawn. is a small lawn, and, and for years I didn't have any lawn, but then I found that so many of the children and everybody's so interested in the chickens that I really needed a little place where they could gather and talk about it and, you know, have a good time. So, so. it's a viewing area. It's a viewing area. Lawn does mm -hmm. have purpose, and as long it as does. it has purpose, That's right. yeah, it, one of the things that you, you choose for, for edibles, what, do, you, do you like to select your favorite varieties or do you actually like to incorporate things and test things as well? I do both. Do you really? There's certain things. I mean, I can't have a year that I don't have sun gold tomatoes, Not there, right? That's what I was <laughs> you know? yeah. And I certainly would never take my blueberries out, or my blackberries, or my apple tree. So, and my pomegranate and fig. I mean, certain things you fall in love with. Sure. And that locks me in. And that's why I need lots of people to put in edible landscapes, so everybody can see it. I mean, it's not just me. Yeah. You know, it's, it, we have to take this a lot further. And it can't be a surprise to people 10 years from now, because I've lived in vain if that's what happens. <laughs> well, I've been an edible landscaper yeah. for many, many yes, years you because have. of your inspiration. Yes, so. you have, and I, I thank you for that. <laughs> but uh, there aren't enough of us, and people need to change gears. It's, I think so, too. It's a new era. It's part of sustainability. It's part of healthy eating. It's part of children learning the whole seasons and what happens and where their food comes from. I have visiting children and if I have carrots growing and, and I know they're a good shape to harvest, I'll say, why don't you go pull on that plant and see what happens? And they kind of look up and you know, no, it's okay, you can do that. And then they pull it up and it's like, good Lord, it's a carrot, <laughs> you know? I remember this one child saying, daddy, 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 did you know carrots come out of the ground? It's like, that's a wonderful connection. 